Cisco Umbrella, remote browser isolation. So you're using Umbrella, you've got it deployed for SD-WAN, networks, mobile devices, and roaming clients. You're leveraging DNS layer security for that first line of defense, secure web gateway with malware protection and proxy capabilities, cloud delivered firewall with intrusion prevention, cloud access security broker for those SaaS based application. You've got Talos providing intelligence, data loss prevention, and then cloud malware detection for that file repository in the cloud. But what about those high value targeted individuals, C-suite, IT, finance, anybody that's lucrative that I can compromise, we probably want to add another layer of protection here. And so how can we do that? Well, we can do what's called remote browser isolation. And this is really cool because this is a instance that's running in the cloud that is going to, to render our web content. So when we go to our browser, it's never actually detonated on the endpoint. It's detonated in this disposable virtual container. It's 100% safe rendering of information. It allows the, the user to still get a native experience and it's malware free. Really, really neat. So what can this do for me? If I went to a malicious site and PowerShell tried to do something on my endpoint with a malicious intent or not, it's actually going to be rendered in the cloud. It's never going to actually impact my user and their device. Pretty neat. But what about other things like phishing or malware in general, exploit kits? The same thing. This only happens in this isolated disposable virtual container and never on my endpoint, removing additional risk. This is really, really neat. And again, these are gonna be for high value targeted individuals for my organization. So let's get into it. Let's go to web policy. Now I've already created a policy, but all you have to do is hit add and you start from scratch. And it's really no big deal. You add a rule, we're gonna call it high value targets. We're gonna give a rule action of isolate, assign it, and we're done pretty much. So isolate allows us to, to Isolate selected rule set identities web requests in a virtual cloud-based browser. We'll go ahead and select the identity here. And you can see there's multiple choices here. We're gonna focus on roaming computers. I've got a specific machine that I wanna make sure that is mitigating risk here that high value targeted individuals log into. Now, I've got all categories selected here, but you can be very granular here as well. So gambling as an example. Now, I cre created a destination list. I'll show you where I created that in a second that has them all checked. We'll go ahead and hit apply. We can do it based on schedule. We can add additional security settings here as well. We'll go ahead and hit save. And then as you get into the bottom part of the rule set, we can go ahead and, and make changes here as well and give it a name. I'm gonna keep the same name. I'm using the same identity as well here, block page any of the additional features, but we want to make sure that we enable decryption. And what I'm doing here is I'm selecting a list that excludes health, fitness, and finance from being decrypted. Now, I'm doing this as um, uh, to prevent decryption for those pages because we have a HR policy as an example that says that users are allowed to go there and they shouldn't be inspected when they're going to health uh, information or finance information. There's some security settings I can enable here as well. We've got malware, command and control callbacks, phishing attacks, and potentially harmful domains. There's some integration like malware security analytics platform with Cisco and others. I've created a, a security settings, no real magic here, and I won't show it, but it's just a settings that includes that last category. We'll go ahead and close this out. I think we're good to go. Let me just check here. Actually, let's just jump over and let's look at the content categories that I created. So we'll go over to content categories and you can see there's a list of them here. And all we have to do is add, give it a name and select our categories. Now what I've done is I've created one called RBI, all categories, and that's all I did. I, I actually used the select all button 
and I was done. The other one let's uh, look at here is the selective decryption list. And so again, you create or add a list and then you select your categories that uh, you don't want to decrypt as an example or applications and others. And you can see how I did that. I hit add and I, I can select those categories. So no real magic, less than you know three minutes of configuration here. And we're already ready to test. That's it. That's all you have to do. There's no infrastructure, no additional stuff. If you've got Umbrella already with AnyConnect deployed for DNS or web proxy, we are good to go. So you can see here, I've got a asset that's valid and protected from a licensing perspective. This is that asset we assigned. And if I go to Amazon as an example, it may be eBay, but it, it's any site. Look, it looks pretty normal. The only difference is, is this bottom right hand corner that says this page is isolated. This is actually being rendered in the cloud. What does it mean again, right? It means that anything that happens here is happening in the cloud and not on this endpoint. This endpoint's fully protected. Let's jump into some logging and we can see here, if we go to isolated, we can see a bunch of uh, URLs that have been isolated. And if we scroll over to the right, we can see that the action here was allowed and isolated. I've got all my categories being highlighted here as well. And I can drill into additional information if I want to. And that's it. Look at that destination, host name, category, all that I need. Thank you.